Okay. Hey guys, and happy Tuesday. Phil and I are so excited to be back with you guys. We just got back from a trip to Israel, which was absolutely amazing. Um, And so we wanted to share with you guys tonight um, some of the different conversations that we were having over there with our friends, a lot was about money mindset and about having that abundance and how we've been able to go from a place of scarcity to abundance. And so we thought that would be really fitting to share with you guys tonight. And so one of, um, One of the biggest things I want to share with you guys is that as we're talking and as we're saying different things about money, it is really important for you to notice the things that trigger you. So as I say different phrases about money, and as I bring up different topics about money, and as I, and some of you are probably like squirming in your seats right now. um, And as we talk about these different things, as I say them, if something kind of like, ooh, hits you in a weird way or kind of triggers you, or you're like, I don't think that's true. And you want to argue with me about it. That's totally fine. I want you to take notice of your strong reactions because your strong reactions are going to tell you so much. Your money story is completely different than mine, is different than Alita's, is different than my mom's, is different than Amanda's, okay? And so there's different things that we've all had to overcome. And at every level, there are new money mindsets that we have to overcome. And so a lot of times that requires different coaching, different training, different things. Um, It's why you see us always up-leveling in our coaching, paying lots and lots of money so that we can learn these new money mindsets so that we can come back and we can go ahead and teach you. So the things that we're going to teach you guys tonight, I've paid thousands to be able to learn these and you guys get to hear them for free. So that's pretty amazing. So take full advantage of that. And even if you're like, I don't know if you're feeling something, just write it down, write down whatever that phrase was, write down whatever that thing was, because I want you to go back later on after this call. And I want you to get curious because that's such a huge part of what we do. And actually Phil's just going to talk real quick, just about self-reflection, self-evaluating, because that's a huge piece of what we do. Um, You know, Brittany Howard even talks about that one of the number one things that she shares with her leaders and her number one like leadership development tip is that her leaders have self-awareness. So if you are not constantly reflecting, if you're not taking note of the things that trigger you and you're just kind of brushing it off, then you're not growing to that next level. So we want to take you guys to the next level. We want to help elevate your money mindset stories. So if you want to talk a little bit about reflecting real quick. Yeah. So having self-awareness is actually really important to uh, your business and what you're trying to do. I'll give you an example uh, of something that happened actually in our marriage. Um, There was one time Megan asked me to take the kids on a trip to Home Depot with me. And I did not want to do it. And I actually got really upset. Um, And I I don't know why I just I just got, you know, like, no, I'm not going to take them. They're going to take it's it's going to take too long. It's ridiculous. I can be much faster without them. And I overreact. I overreacted. And I, I really tried to think about it afterwards and said, why did I react that way? And what I found out is I had in my mind that I was going to go cheat on my diet. And so because I was going to go cheat on my diet, I did not want to take one of my snitches as kids because they would have told Megan. And so I got really angry about that situation, not because of the request Megan made, but because of internally what I wanted to do. But if I didn't reflect on that decision, I never would have figured that out. And so there's a lot of things that are going to happen in your business. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen in your life. And unless you have the intellectual curiosity, trying to figure out why you reacted the way you reacted, you're not going to identify some of those things. You know, I'll give you an example just in our business, what has happened Ever since Megan started this, she knew she was going to go emerald and then diamond. So because she had that mindset, when something went wrong or when something got hard in her business, it was just a bump in the road because she knew where she was going. Without that vision, without that dream, without the reflection of where we were going as a family, a lot of those things could have been detrimental to our business because we could have had discouragement and give up. I call them make it or break it moments. And I had them at pretty much every single rank. I had something huge in my business 
that could have broken me. But because of the vision that we had, we were able to overcome those hurdles. And so it's really important to have that reflection about why you do what you do, why you said what you said, and really understand yourself. And that's going to be a big thing in your business and just in your life. Why did you react to your kids the way you just did? Why did that person saying no trigger you so much? What are the reasons that you're that you're being triggered and why did that happen? Okay, so we're going to dive a little bit more into the money mindset aspect of it. And so, like I said, just really pay attention to like what is happening inside of you um, as we speak. And so I'm going to share with you guys a list of just, this comes from um, the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. If you have not read that, I highly recommend reading it. It is hands down one of my absolute favorite books when it comes to money mindset. And so if you don't have it, get it, read it. It's incredible. And so in there, he goes through these two different lists. Now he doesn't talk about it as a stuck mindset versus abundance mindset. He talks about it as poor versus rich, but we're just going to kind of categorize it a little bit differently here, but it's the same thing. So I'm going to read from both of these lists and I want you to figure out which list you identify with most. Do you identify with the stuck list or do you identify with the abundance list? And as I'm sharing those, if something really sticks out to you, I want you to jot it down. I want you to make a note about it so that you can go back later and you can be curious about it. Okay. So stuck mindset is believe that life just happens to me. Whereas abundance believes I create my life. Stuck says they play the game of money, not to lose. And abundance plays the game of money to win. Stuck says they want to be wealthy or says, I want to be emerald. I want to be diamond. Whereas abundance says I'm committed to being wealthy. I'm committed to being emerald. I'm committed to being diamond. There's a big difference between wanting it and being committed to it. Stuck thinks small. Abundance thinks big. Stuck focuses on obstacles. Abundance focuses on opportunities. Stuck resents wealthy and successful people, while abundance admires other wealthy and successful people. Stuck associates with negative or unsuccessful people. So look at who you are surrounding yourself with. Are they the people that you are complaining with about your business, the way that things aren't going the way that they want? Take inventory of who those people are. Or are you surrounding yourself with positive, successful people who are encouraging you, cheering you on, and are helping you to overcome those obstacles. Stuck thinks negatively about selling and promotions, while abundance is willing to promote themselves and their values. Stuck um, believes um, smaller than their problems, while abundance believes bigger than their problems. Stuck are poor receivers, And abundance are excellent receivers. And this is a really interesting thing because a lot of times you would kind of think it was the reverse, but if you are poor at receiving and allowing other people to help you, that is actually a sign of a poor stuck mindset because those who are wealthy and have abundance actually are great receivers. Um, Stuck chooses to get paid based on time, whereas abundance chooses to get paid on results. And we've even changed the way Phil does a lot of his marketing business solely based on that because it's not about the hours anymore. It's about it's about the results that he's giving people. Um, stuck um, thinks either or and abundance thinks both and. Stuck focuses on their working income while abundance focuses on their net worth. This is really interesting, you guys. If you are, if you surround yourself with wealthy people, they don't talk necessarily about how much money they make. They talk about what their net worth is, which is why on my phone with my screensaver, I have net worth of a million dollars. I don't just have a million dollars because that's important. I'm trying to think. I tell myself I have a millionaire mind. Um, Okay, stuck mismanages their money. Um, Abundance manages their money well. Stuck works hard for their money and abundance has their money work hard for them. Stuck lets fear stop them. Abundance acts in spite of fear 
and stuck thinks they already know everything while abundance constantly learns and grows. And so that list, I just really want you guys to kind of jot down and you can even put in the comments, like, what are some things that stood out to you? Maybe you were surprised by something and you were like, oh, I thought that was an abundance mindset. Turns out it's not, it's a stuck mindset. But the other thing that I want you guys to realize too, is that as you're going through this and you're, if you're in a place where you feel like you are stuck with your money. I want you to know that you are not stuck. You are just thinking that you are stuck. And so you're creating this situation with your money, with your thoughts, which great news is you can change your thoughts. And so if you just keep telling yourself, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Like if you're at the same rank for forever and you just can't seem to get ahead or it doesn't matter how much money you guys make, you're always stuck in the same position. You're literally living into the story that you're telling yourself. So if you don't like the story that you're living out right now with money, you have the ability to write a new story and you can change it. And this might take some time, but you get to rewrite that money story. Well, and and one of the things we did, you know, when we were, when we hit the rank Emerald, we at the beginning were not paying off our student loans. So we were making this extra income, but we still had all this debt over our head. And it's like, what were we doing with that? And so uh, some of you may be asking, why are we talking about money right now, right? Well, the reason why we're talking is sometimes if you feel stuck, if you feel like you're not getting ahead, then she was working really hard, but our student loan debt was still, it was still where it was, $100,000. It was actually increasing. It wasn't, in, it wasn't until we started actually moving ahead with the things that we always said we were going to do if we had the money, that more money actually started appearing because our mindset was different, if that makes sense to you. So it wasn't until we started setting aside, you know, as soon as our paycheck happened, we set aside what we were tithing and then what we were paying our student loans off with. Then we did everything else with, with that money that we would on, on any other month. And it wasn't until that started happening. We started seeing those numbers go down where she's like, oh, I do see the light at the end of the tunnel. And then she started working harder because she could see that our dreams are, are becoming more and more uh, visible. And the other thing I wanted to share, you know, the one uh, thing on the list about uh, seeing obstacles over seeing solutions. I was at lunch one time with a friend and they literally were just presenting obstacles all the time. And they're like, yeah, I'm a very positive person um, and optimist. And I'm like, uh, you're not. Uh, I just gave you five uh, solutions to your problem. And all you did was come up with more obstacles. I said, that's not a positive or optimistic person that you're you're finding problems. You're not finding solutions. And until you admit that, it, it, then you can't change it. So he was going around his, his life thinking he was a solution-oriented person, but yet all he was doing was showing problems. So it's really important to have that reflection, knowing where you are so that you can either change it or alter that course. Yeah. And that's kind of where that self-evaluation piece comes in because you can't change something if you are unaware that it is even a problem. And so different things are going to come up at different times in your life, especially when it comes to money and going after your goals. And so you just have to be willing to look at those things and be like, hmm, okay, is this true? Have I been, have I been believing a lie about money? And so if it is, then you've got to dig that up and you have to be able to replace it with new truths. And this is something that is going to continue on throughout the rest of your life. Um, And so something else that we wanted to share is a lot of times, you know, think about different things that you have heard about money. You can even drop them in the comments if you want. Think about different things that you have heard about money, you know, just growing up, right? If you have heard about, oh, well, um, wealthy people are, um, they're really selfish, right? Wealthy people are selfish. Um, It's holier to not have money. If I'm suffering, then I'm going to be closer to God. And, you know, I mean, you can chime in with just some different money things, right? Like money doesn't grow on trees and all of these different things, right? There we go. Yeah. Money doesn't grow on trees. Um, There's so many different things that we have grown up hearing. And so if you think about it, right, like your, um, 
you're not going to want to go after something, right? You're not going to work for something if you feel like it's not important, if you feel like it's disgusting, if you don't value it, if in the back of your mind, you're looking at people who have money and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like they're so selfish. I can't believe it. What? Who needs that much money? Have you ever heard somebody say that? Have you ever thought that? Who possibly needs that much money? I have had people say to me, well, you just have so much money over there. Why don't you just give it to us over here? Because we're really struggling. And so we need it. So instead of them changing their situation, they want me to feel bad about my situation. And so I want you guys to just think about maybe what some of those different things are that you have heard and just acknowledge that some of those things, while people were well-meaning and they they wanted to help you, those things are not actually always helpful. And so if you have this story in the back of your mind that money is, it's a bad thing. It is bad to have money, right? Here's the reality, you guys. We need more money in the hands of good people. That's the reality. Money is an exchange of energy. If I'm making a lot of money, that doesn't mean that you can't make a lot of money. I'm not taking money from you by making money over here. There is an abundance. There is always more money to be made. If you took a room full of people, right, and you had millionaires and you had people who were struggling with money and you took all of their money away, the millionaires would go back to be being millionaires and the people who struggled with money would continue to struggle with money if you started both of them from zero. Because what is the difference? It's the way that they think about money. So the difference between you guys and the difference between us is we just have different thoughts about money, but we didn't, we didn't always have those thoughts. We've continued to change and mold those thoughts. But something that Phil and I were talking about that we've always stayed true in is that we always knew that we were, that we were not going to be in the situation that we were in for forever. Like when our kids were on Medicaid, we knew that was not our story for forever. When we were in debt up to our eyeballs, we knew that was not going to be our story forever. We had a long-term vision. And so some of those obstacles that you guys are getting stuck on is because you have never seen yourself with money. And so if you cannot see yourself with money, you are never going to allow yourself to get to that place because your brain and your body will not let you go or will not let you have something that you've never seen before, right? If you've never visioned it, if your brain has never gone to that place, your body's never going to follow, right? It just doesn't work, right? Or if your brain and your body, if it perceives that having money is wrong, right? It's never going to move you to that place of having it because in your mind, that's actually a negative thing. So we have to come to this place where we can actually start to visualize ourselves with money, okay? And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the really big, massive, you know, dreams that you might have with money. I'm talking about, let's visualize you grew by $500 next month. You had a $500 increase in your paycheck next month. How do you feel about that? Do you think, oh, I just got lucky? Oh, just had a lucky month. It was the iPads. I just went up because of the iPads. It was just luck. Everything's going to go downhill from here, right? Or are you choosing to believe that you operated in a different manner because of an incentive that was here? You had different thoughts. And so therefore you approached your business in a different way because your belief was higher. And so you have to think about those things. What if, what if you were to have another thousand dollars in the next two months? How does that feel? for you to have that extra money. The, the other thing I would say is what's your plan? Because if you squander what you're working really hard for, you can lose motivation because you're working all this, all this time, you're doing all this work and what do you have to show for it? And that was actually our problem uh, when once we hit Emerald because she was making this extra money and that m- extra money was just going out the door. So we're still in the same situation. Um, 
<laughs> Lita's raising her hand. Um, but, you know, it's just something that, to think about with that, right? It wasn't until we actually had a purpose with our money and we started allowing our money to work for us that we actually saw the purpose and said, you know, no, no, no I'm going to work a little harder because I want to put, we just put $5,000 on our loan. I want to put 8,000 next month. So for me to put that much next month, I got to work that much harder. And, and so, or we have an investment that we want to go for, and we know we need X amount for that investment. So, okay, I'm going to work harder because we now had a purpose with what we're going to do with our money. In the beginning, it was to pay groceries right? Like, hey, we're, we're going to buy groceries with this money. So when, when, when you start having a purpose of where you are going to put it, you start having everything in your life starts aligning with your goal. Some of you want to be emerald, which is an amazing goal. But your decisions right now are not aligning with that goal. Once you start aligning every part of your life towards that goal, towards where you are committed to going, you will start seeing that those things are those one uh, um, hard obstacles become easy bumps because you're committed to go in that direction. Yeah. So I want you guys to think about that. I want you to think about if you had next month a $500 increase or a $1,000 increase, or a $2,000 increase. I want you guys to think about what are you actually going to do with that money? Is it, are you just going to squander it? Do you have a plan and a purpose for it? What are you going to use that money for? Because I will tell you, wealthy people know where their money is going. Okay. And so if you want to start thinking like a wealthy person, because you're going to be one one day, then you can start to, those are things that you can start to change right here and right now. But if you are always telling yourself, I never have enough, it will never be enough. It is, you could have an extra 50,000 in your bank account the next month. And you, some of you could still be thinking it's never enough. I'm never, I'm never going to have enough. Um, And so it's all about your perspective and the way that you think about it. There could be someone with $200 in their bank account and they could say, I am so grateful to have $200 in my bank account. This is amazing. I'm just over the top happy that I have this money. And somebody else could have 20,000 and they could just be like this. I just, I have no idea what we're going to do. Like, it's just too much. And so you just have to think Alita the other day had talked about being grateful for every single dollar that comes in through Plexus. Truly and honestly, one of the very first steps is being grateful for where you're at. If you are making $1 or you're making $100 or $1,000 or $100,000, we need to start with that heart of gratitude and abundance and that we're so thankful to be where we are. And maybe it's not where we want to be yet. And that's okay. We are hopeful for the future that we have set our eyes on, but we are grateful for the extra that we have. Because if you are not grateful for what is coming in now, You're also not going to be grateful when you start adding zeros to the end of those numbers. And I know that sounds ridiculous. And you're probably like, no, I would definitely be grateful if I had your paycheck, (laughs) right? But it doesn't start there. You have to start being grateful where you are now. And that abundance is going to keep going. I remember when we were Emerald at at one time, the one month we made, I I think it was around $10,000. And then the next month, uh, or, or two months down the road, it, it dropped to like $6,000, right? And we were sitting there like, oh my gosh, our, our paycheck dropped by this much. And I, and we I were literally- We complaining I about li- an extra six grand. I literally had to stop and just say, wait a second. Like, can we just first be thankful that we still made $6,000? Like it's so, when we say this seems ridiculous, when you were looking at it from a day-to-day perspective, the, those ebb and flows can sometimes get to you. But when you look at it like, oh my gosh, we came from two other companies that were in network marketing where we really didn't make any money whatsoever, right? But now we're actually being very successful at it. There's some people in this business, guys, that this is their first month they they just made they just made three hundred dollars and are close to an iPad and they've tried other MLMs and they've wasted money or they spent money more than what has come in and they're already making more so perspective is really important 
Yeah. Um, and so I guess for tonight, we'll just kind of end it with this. Um, I want you guys to make a list when we're done this call. I want you to write down 25 reasons why money is good. And if I say that and you're triggered, that's fantastic because I was too. <laughs> Even in the place that I'm at, when Jess Heffley asked us to do this, I was like, uh, 25 reasons why money is good. I'm like, I can think of about three. And so I want to challenge you guys to really write these down. Think about all the good things that you can do with money, because that right there, you literally thinking, oh, I can only think of a few. It's a limiting money mindset that you have. And if you don't value something and you don't think that it's important, you're not going to take good care of it. If you're going around and you're saying like, oh, I don't, I don't need, I don't need a lot of money. That's not really important to me. People are more important to me than money, right? Well, it, it doesn't have to be either or, right? It goes back to that stuck versus abundance mindset. Stuck is it believes you have to be either or, and abundance believes it can be both and. We're not choosing money over people. We're choosing to love people well, and we get compensated incredibly well because of what we do, but we're not choosing money over people. That's not the way that it has to work, right? You're literally comparing apples with oranges. You know, when people talk about like, oh, well, uh, like love or money, right? Like we're just living on love. Well, you also need money. <laughs> like love is not an exchange that you're going to be able to buy things for, like the necessities that your family needs, right? And we've had a lot of love when we've not had money. And we've had a lot of love when we have money. It's not one of those things that you don't have to give up love <laughs> in order to have money. But it's, again, it's one of those money stories that we've heard all the time. And so you just have to kind of take some time to deconstruct those things. And a good place to start is getting curious around some of the things that we talked about at the beginning with the two different lists, and then go ahead and write out a list of 25 reasons why money is good. Cause you're not going to work after something if you don't value it. Um, and so honestly, all of these things just comes down to our thoughts. And I know that sounds so simple and so repetitive because we talk about mindset a lot, but we live into the story that we tell ourselves. So the things that we focus on, the things that we're thinking about often, right? That's going to change the way that we behave. It's going to change our emotions. It's going to change the way that we think. It's going to change all of these different things. And it all starts with our mindset. And I know that was a huge thing for me, like feelings, right? Well, I don't feel like this, or I don't feel like that. And I thought that you couldn't change your feelings, but the reality is, as John Maxwell points out, you can in fact change your feelings by changing your thoughts. So anytime you come up with a situation in your business where you're feeling stuck or you don't like the way that you feel about something or things just aren't going the way that you wanted them to, I want to empower you to know that you can rewrite your story and at any given moment, right? It could be Tonight, it could be in two weeks from now when you feel like you're having a really bad day or things aren't going your way. You have the power at any moment to rewrite your story and decide that you are going to be, that you're going to have that abundance mindset, that you are going to live into that new story because you are the one who gets to write it. Um, what was, did I have anything else? Hang on. Okay. <clears throat> There was one other um, like little quote thing that I wanted to read to you guys. Um, and it says, rich people believe you can have your cake and eat it too. Middle-class people believe cake is too rich, so I'll only take a piece. And poor people don't believe they deserve cake. So they order a donut and focus on the whole and wonder why they have nothing. That is so profound in just thinking about just the ways that we view different things. Are you someone who feels like, well, I've set a goal here of Ruby because I don't feel like I deserve emeralds. I feel like that's too rich. And then you're looking at all of the holes. You're looking at all the different things. You're only noticing the obstacles. Or are you believing in full abundance that you can have your cake and eat it too? Do you have anything else you want to add, babe? No. Okay. So I think that's it. Actually, um, 
No. Okay. We're out of time. Just kidding. Um, so I won't share anything else, but I want you guys to know that you can live into abundance. We are living proof of that. The fact that we just got back from a trip to Israel, um, that we did not even plan on that was spontaneous that our friends invited us on that. We were able to just at spur of the moment, say, yes, we were able to pay for it. Like you guys, those things are possible for you too. It's not just for us. It's for all of you guys. So I want to empower you guys tonight. I want you to dig up some of those old money beliefs and start writing your new money story, because like we said before, the world needs more money in the hands of good people who are going to live and give abundantly. So thanks so much for jumping on you guys. Good night. Should I end it? You have to pause.